Hmm? What's his name? Is it right underneath us? <laughs> Ken something. It's about for Ken. Okay. We're ready. We're live. Yes. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. This is the regular monthly board meeting for the Tiger County Industrial Development Agency. It is Wednesday, October 6th, 2021 at three at four. Uh, 39. Um, this meeting is hereby called to order. Christine, could you do an attendance? <clears throat> Jen Ciccarelli? Yes. Kevin Gillette? Yes. Martha Sabri? Here. John Ward? Here. Eric Knowles? Aaron Gowan? Yes. First up, go ahead. <laughs> Tracy Minnell. Chop oh, <laughs> Tracy. Sorry. Of I'm course, here. Tracy Minnell. So sorry. <laughs> sorry. You're under a lot of pressure, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so first privilege of the floor today is Pete DeWind, County Attorney, and Elaine Jardine, County Planner, to discuss the real property tax law 487 and its impacts on solar projects in the county. Well, the short version of this is that there is a provision in the New York State real property tax law 487 which provides that for renewable energy projects, including solar, wind, some biomass projects, depending on size, mm -hmm. that there's an automatic tax exemption that the property value and its delta between that and the amount by which it increases as assessed by the improvements for 15 years is automatically tax exempt. So we have received a letter requesting that the county provide within 60 days our demand for some kind of a pilot agreement. And this covers over into some territory, which it sounds to me like the IDA had uh, previously uh, covered a request that Sun East and the full name Sun East Valley Solar LLC be considered for a pilot for a project, I believe not far from over. So that's what's really kind of prompted the current discussion. This letter requires that within 60 days, the county provide some kind of a demand letter as to whether the county as a municipal entity will request some sort of a pilot agreement for the additional valuation that the property may incur because of the solar project. We would have to then work with the, uh, the town and with the school district and see if they would also require or try to do their own independent pilot or uh, payment in lieu of taxes agreement. But before that occurs, I think we were looking to see whether this board wanted to consider uh, a prior request from Sun East regarding uh, a pilot occurring through the IDA. If that were the case, that would obviate the need for the county to separately ask for a pilot agreement. So, the county's going to ask who for the pilot agreement? We would ask Sun East. So what this does is under 47 of the RPTL, the entity that would otherwise be tax exempt has to ask the county, the school district, the town, if they will require some kind of a pilot, some kind of a contract, making up for the additional value. Otherwise, it's automatically exempt. So this would come from the county. This puts us on notice that the county itself has 60 days to tell them if we are in fact going to require some additional taxes on the additional development, the solar project in this case, for that parcel. Bear in mind, the other taxing entities received similar letters, the town and the school. Well, it's in their response. So uh, the school wanted to wait and see what the conversation, how the conversation went. I did meet with the town this afternoon and you may have an opportunity there with the town to lead a pilot. I can't say for sure, but in my conversation this, just this afternoon, um, it seems that there may be a possibility there for the town to actually lead a pilot. I explained that the IDA really is not interested. It already said no. Uh, that this goes against 
you know, typically what this board looks at is it involves pilot yeah. or number of jobs and whether they're going to do, do the, the project anyway. We made it very clear that IBA really is not interested in going forward with a pilot on this. And, and it seems that there may be an opportunity for the town to leave because the county from the, my committee meeting, county does not seem to be interested in leading a pilot either. So the town has done so on other solar projects. So there's precedent there that they have um, led this type of, of a- This is the uh, one in the uh, turn, final line of turnpike, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I only know a little enough information to get me in trouble, but there, the, I think they still have to pay taxes on the land, on the unused farmland, yeah. not on one top of it. And so whatever, we're getting for that unused farmland would still come. I would think all the acreage, correct? Yeah, whatever that they just, own. Just no new equipment or improvements. Right. Correct. Right. Correct. So this is part of a larger discussion, kind of, of as far as Tioga County as an entity goes, as far as this whole area. Some places, some counties run things entirely through the county. Some places run things entirely through the IDA if they're looking at whether a pilot is appropriate. Some municipalities keep 47 in place so that there is automatically a tax exemption unless there's a request by the municipality to enter into one separately. Some can opt out, meaning a local law is passed that says that we're not gonna follow 47 anymore, in which case no pilots can be done through the municipal entity, through the town or the county in this case, but Pilots can always still be done through the IDA, and some counties use that to try to drive intentionally all the pilot work regarding any renewable project directly through the IDA. So whoever picks the ball up, do they negotiate on behalf of all the taxing authorities? They don't have to, but they usually do. Usually. So, so, so all these, there's a whole bunch of uh, solar projects that have been done around here without a pilot that I know of. The one over on uh, Route 96 across the valley from me, mm -hmm. there was no pilot for that that I know of. In town Tioga? Yes. Oh, yeah, there was. That's what this side is telling me. Almost all the projects that had some kind of pilot. But it didn't come through the IDA. Correct. That's right. It came through the town. The town of Tioga has done a number, the town of Oviedo has, the town of Nichols has. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And it came through the county, though, not the IDA. All right. So there's two two things for 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 discussion tonight. One one is how we are going to handle the Sun East project specifically, and then the broader question as more of these are coming. There are four or four or five identified on there that haven't been completed yet that we know are out there. Going forward, what position will the county and the IDA, you know, whatever other uh, taxing entities are going to what position you're going to take at pilots going forward. So let me ask this question regarding it. If we don't take any action, they automatically get a 15 year deal. Yes. But do they still pay sales tax on the stuff they buy? This is just for the property tax, so yes. Unless they're otherwise exempt, yes. So a, a pilot- Are they otherwise exempt? Next question that's gonna be a surprise at some point. Are they otherwise exempt for sales tax if we don't initiate or the county doesn't initiate? If nobody pilot? does. I know that if the pilot is initiated by the, another entity other than the IDA, there's no sales tax exemption included in that agreement. Sales tax exemption is by way of an IDA pilot. And it's 748,000. But do they buy the stuff here? 748. Okay. I'm not so, certain what we'll we'll break down of That's good. what they always say. They're going to buy the stuff here, but they lie to them. Yeah. 748, 540. Okay. There's, there's not materials here. Yeah, that would, yeah. How does the, uh, how does the uh, sales tax, which you count split, what's the so the, the that's all local portion to the county. They're automatically exempt from their state portion. Regardless. There you go. I mean, you just wait for the next shoe to drop. This is the part that starts to 
irritate. Yeah, yeah, it's just it, it's not a very comfortable situation when you keep hearing it on the back end. So this is the town, the county only. Yes. Yes. Okay. So how about and the that's the county portion? So that would actually yes. flow through the county coffers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'm not a politician. I just would like to know. Right. I focused the this, this table on the county because it was the county that was asking us to do the research and the right. analysis. Well, I guess that there's a possibility for the town to float a pilot and it would make them happy. And the county's going to get the $748,000 or whatever they spend in the county in sales tax. That seems to be a so your I'm committee okay. was not interested in doing it. That takes care of that. But it does. Was the have the pilots that have already been granted by the towns? I mean, is, are they uniform? Or are they so again? If you look at the, the sheet there that Elaine has pulled together, you'll mm -hmm. see the the uh, towns that have uh, participated in a pilot in some manner, and you can see it's really across the board. So you have different megawatt. Facilities, different amounts per megawatt. Usually, that's how you determine it. You know, four thousand a megawatt or whatever, maybe. But it's really all over the place, as well as uh, usually included escalation in there. Escalation mm -hmm. rates vary as Very. well. So, so, so how? What methodology are they using? Are they just throwing darts? They are talking with the solar developer and coming to an agreement. Now, we have tried to provide some guidance on this, but it's it's not. It's the town's business if they're going to be the ones right. uh, taking on the, on the pilot. And we have right. tried to provide a bit of guidance, um, but the towns are going to do what they're what going they're to do. Doing. They're the ones that are going to answer your question. Whatever somebody asked earlier is, uh, you know, it would be the town's going to leave the pilot. They're going to be in charge of the, the uh, negotiation and the terms. There have been some work statewide on trying to standardize how some of these assessments are done for improvements. And the obvious purpose of the law is to create more of an incentive for renewable energy projects to go forward, unless we decide that's not something countywide that we want to promote. There have been in many counties throughout New York, both through IDA rules and through local law, through the county or municipality, um, efforts to standardize how these are assessed based on the megawattage of the project. So some of them say, for example, it's $7,000 per megawatt with an escalator. And that way it's standard across the board. Some counties, Lewis County in particular, have even done um, encouragement that projects be cited on particular lands. So prime agricultural land isn't taken up. And they'll provide a little bit more of an incentive if you cite it in a place that's preferable. So remember, a while back, we had a conversation actually on Sun East or where it was presented, you know, if this is deemed to be on prime agricultural land that we look for, uh, um, more per megawatt. Um, this particular project, it was determined to be um, through information provided by soil and water uh, that this was not prime ag land, it's medium grade or whatever. Although Elaine has some, uh, gathered a lot of very good information about what some other communities are doing and how they're approaching that. So she has you know, information she can share with us on that as well if you're interested in hearing that. But there's room and I would, my recommendation would be to have a sit down county and IDA minimally, uh, towns if we can get them uh, to participate, to have a talk about doing just what Pete is suggesting, standardizing uh, in some way. So if anybody comes to Tyre County, a pretty good idea. If it's this, this, and this, you're gonna pay this. Or if, it, you know, if it's prime ag, you're gonna pay this. If it's medium, this, or whatever it may be whatever the standard you set up, but really there are going to be more and it would really do save a lot more discussions if we could get to a point where we could agree on some sort of standard methodology for uh, solar or energy. Um, mm -hmm. That would be moving projects. forward. Yes, yeah. and moving forward, exactly. That could be done through the IDA. You would do it through an internal process and it could be done if the county is moving the entity through the county and we can work towards that depending on where, where ultimately people want to go with this. So we have some options. We just need to know kind of a roadmap of where we need to go. The most immediate thing though was our yes. clock is ticking on Sun East. So we had to figure whether we, the county or the municipalities that were included were gonna 
push something forward or if this was something that we were going to look to do as a reconsideration to the idea. How much time is on the clock? It's November 26th. That's our days. job to have a deal date? Yes. yes. And just a reminder that this particular project's agency fee would be 247000 394 to the IDA if we're the one to do it. So if it's going to happen regardless, at least in my opinion, we could work with that money, do some positive things. Um, and then the other thing that didn't get, I know that turned me off anyways, and I don't think it's come up yet is standardizing that de decommissioning plan. I mean, that's what ag aggravated me a little bit is they gave that decommissioning plan that they gave to us in the middle of the useful life of the solar panels, well, which is worth the town of Nichols did a one and they made them have a bond. Sure. Well, it, but they, they gave us a decommissioning plan in the middle of the useful life of the panels and basically said, well, they're basically we can scrap these out for the cost of deconstruction. So we only have to give you a bond for 180 grand. Mm -hmm. So it was I millions mean, to tear it up. But they're saying it's scrap value. No, I mean, that's, 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 that's is the worst decommissioning plan that we've seen. The whole experience with this particular company was not good through the local. Talking sunny. Yes. So yeah, if sunny nobody sunny. does anything, the 15 year grace period goes to them, but there's still no commissioning plan. Decommissioning plan. And they could walk away and leave that stuff. In 10 years, belly up. Yes, so that's a great point. You do through some of these tools, you do get a little more control over how the project is going to look, a little more control over what the end of the project will look like. Particularly if you want to ensure there's some kind of a bond or tail end, so regardless of ownership or bankruptcy and solvency, you do have some fund that can work toward mm -hmm. whatever re decommissioning you need. Mm -hmm. So the IDA is doing it has its benefits, as Jane suggested, the fee associated with it, the ability to put more uh, contingencies on it. Um, in this particular case, sorry, sorry, the um, uh, Sun East is looking for 18 years. The uh, yeah. municipal pilot cannot go as long as 18 years. It can only go 14 years. Just another consideration. They just want to have everything. Another way. another consideration while we're kicking this around. I don't want to hold folks up at that to be places, but uh, we're, we're, we're looking at, say, in this case, Sun East or Renovus, or used to be Renovus. You know, we're already getting into the used to be because, in my opinion, a lot of this stuff is going to be consolidated, consolidated, consolidated. And it'd be like the guy at the end that nobody knows who holds his mortgage, so he doesn't have to pay it. So, all these decommissioning plans and everything we're talking about here, how many times is it going to change hands? And who's going to keep track of all that mess? Because in 15 or 20 years, some of these things are getting decommissioned, or they're coming back here for another pilot to recommission it, pull everything down and start over again. Or 10 years from now, they realize that the lease is a better deal if we put new solar panels on it at twice as uh, generate twice the power or whatever. You know, I mean, technology is not going backwards. So I think there's a lot more to this, like like you're talking about. You know, you get the decommission plan and it's in the wrong place, and and if you don't do something, you get no decommission plan, and at least, which is where we are with this one. Yeah, in my, I got nothing. In my opinion, uh, at least the town, the county, the state, even in all kinds of precarious situations, 15, 20 years from now. I personally am not going to get too excited 15, 20 years from now, but somebody is. So I, you know, I think there's a lot more thought than just saying, "All right, we're gonna, we get an agency fee, we get our sales tax, we, you know, all yep. these things." But I think, so to why me, this is evolving into a, how do you protect the the parties involved, right? More than the dollars and cents of it. How do you protect the the, the people that pay the taxes, right? So within why then did they come to the IDA to ask for a pilot? If they could automatically get 15 years through the county. Well, for one thing, they like the, the, the flavor of the $748,000 tax abatement. abatement. 
right so, off. So that, it's gotta that's be on the front than side that. of 15 or 20 years. That's a pretty nice deal. Okay. Well, also, because you, know. you can require they pay 99%. And you've requested from us less than 50. If you counter, because right? okay. you're saying you can counter their pilot. For the right, the the county has the capacity to require their annual pilot payments to be 99% full taxation. Yep, just no more than whatever the full assessment is, whatever that may be without standardized assessment tools. And you can't really tell them what's up anyway. Yeah, exactly. Is this a negotiation fee for can the county impose its wishes with respect to the amount of taxation? Well, we could come up with in a, a discussion with them what we think the property is going to ultimately be worth with whatever they're saying, its current appraised value, and then we could demand a pilot for up to that amount on our behalf, the school district in the town, or no. just us. If they don't agree to yeah, the pilot that? terms that you proposed, does it by default revert to the low taxation? No, nope, they have to work it out before they can go forward. Okay, so they're, I won't say it's your mercy, but you have control over the negotiation. Yes, the negotiation. So we should counter. They can't go back. Right. Okay. So, so Marty, the second part of your question is why, um, only alluded to it earlier, they're looking for 18 years and the normal uh, course of technology for so like 15. So I, I'm sure they're financing or probably is based on 18 years and that's why they need a little bit longer than the 15 years. So they're, that's another reason that they- And with that 700 reason, 700 and something on the front end is so nice. Better. And the way they're going about this is doing nothing to make me feel like I should help them out. Just so you know. So they're just like, okay, you're gonna start suing everybody? All right, mm -hmm. bring it, let's go. So yeah, and on top of that, Tracy doesn't feel good about it. Required to provide that letter. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like it's not like okay, fine, here you go. They are required to provide that letter. But I don't know, uh, Joe, if you can answer this is the initial negotiations and potential agreement with the IDA was at six thousand per megawatt for eighteen years. Mm -hmm. um, if if we were and we said and then the IDA said no. So. Now, if the IDA were to reconsider and come back with another number, I mean, are we, are we able to do that? Or are we now stuck with this, what we had said initially, the 6,000 per megawatt? Oh, good question. I would say no, that we're not, that we, we're we not turn, stuck. We we're back at square, down. we're at square one. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and but I guess I'll turn it back to you. At what point do we are we out of the no taxation situation? Where That's we respond to their letter, and, or the county does, whomever does, and says we're going to impose a pilot in this circumstance. Does that end the no taxation? Yes. There's no. Right, we could say we're I'm asking take... this question actually the second time, but uh, I want to be. I want to know what the point is where the point of no return. And then we're just in a negotiation with them. And if, uh, yeah. Well, but what if, what if they turn down the pilot at that point? What, what if we can't come to an agreement and they say, no, then we're back to the no taxation, correct? Right. I don't think they can construct until we've worked out the pilot. I don't know that. I haven't seen that anybody's actually litigated that. Well, throughout the state right. about what kind of pole, but I would guess it would Yeah, because everybody's like all gung-ho to get these things built everywhere, and I'm not in favor of it, so that's my issue. Right, so what's kind of stop? What we would do to stop them from building, and we might have to go to court for that. I, I do not know if anyone has had that actually come up. Most of the challenges have not been about that. Yep. For 60 days, November 26th, you said, Christine? Yes. The, the pilot doesn't have to be in place by then. We just have to give them notice that we want to enter. We're going to impose. But we need to know well, what entity, probably, or which entity is going to be doing that. Somebody has to. Right. <laughs> right. It's I think like, I'll I'll take it. Take it. I don't blame you all. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> if we're not going to do this through the IDA, if we're going to do it through the municipality, all three municipal entities should send them a letter back saying, we are going to require something, put them on notice, 
Um, and then we can work out the details of who's going to be the front end negotiator and how it's going to look and ultimately who's going to do the assessment because we can't, like we are just saying, we can't charge more than the full assessed value. So we, even idea. if we liquidated it at something like 7,000 per megawatt, mm -hmm. you know, like that can't exceed whatever the valuation is going to be for the improvements. So there would be a lot of work we'd have to do, but you're not locked into that 60 days. The 60 days is just to tell them we are going to demand something. It will not be accepted. That stops, stops the clock. That stops yeah. the clock. Okay. And you can I send like that you. tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So the school's waiting and the town's waiting. Uh, they reached out and, and they know we got this letter. What do we do? So we're going to have some conversations. We'll get back to you, but I can let them know that and maybe we can write a template letter even for them to send Sign. out and say, sure. You know, hey, hey, Aaron, what? how do you feel about this thing? I, don't know, I think probably we're better off if the IDA takes charge. I, I mean, and controls it. But, but I, I'm, I'm with you, Tracy, a little bit. I, I, That's kind of scary. I mean, it's, I mean, you've got some negotiation strength, it sounds, you counter back and does anybody know what goes on with these things once they're done? I mean, they built this thing, then what? Because this one over here I'm, that I have to look at all day, every day, at Norbit, I believe is the one across the valley from me. I've heard all kinds of stories that it's not even online or it wasn't online for a long time. Something happened to it. It didn't work. I don't know what's going on mm -hmm. with it, but nobody knows. And I ask people and they're like, I don't know. Wow. Does was, anybody have a clue? There was a backup with NYSA on bringing them aboard, um, connecting them to the network. I also heard that I heard that a whole bunch of the glass got broken this winter with that heavy snow. Mm -hmm. So is it not functional anymore? I can ask Doug Chersonowski. He's the code enforcement officer. He'll know. But I do believe that one is, is operational. But as far as the damage over the winter, I, I don't know about those details. But I nobody I, knows. I do feel that there needs to be a plan in place to nobody's nobody's checking on these things. Well, they're not that old. That's a problem. Yeah, the state well, just been not built the, the, the for biggest years. issue is nobody knows what the value is gonna be in 20 to 30 years. Who knows that? Nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows what the bond amount should be. Uh, you know, but it is it is in the name of the municipality. So regardless of who owns it in the transactions that bond should be in is in the name of the municipality and the municipality holds it. But you still have no idea if those if that equipment is going to devalue like the recycling market tumbled. You know, no nobody knows that. And um, you know, they're saying that this, these panels are gonna be, you know, like gold, even when they're at the time the developers are, even at the time of decommissioning decommissioning and that you know they should be able to sell them or whatever the town and it's the enemy should nobody's be. buying that they nobody should. nobody's it's gonna decommission so these things unknown. when they're still functioning right i want to know what, what you know what's the cost when they're at the end of their useful life which is probably the cost that they gave us less their recycle value that no longer exists and you need a bond right. of something in the seven yeah. figures mm. and i know that you need the bond, but you need, um, you know, you need evidence that that bond continues for the, Correct. For the life. Correct. Yes. And, and Correct. And that's monitored. Right. And, and Kevin brought up the point that, you know, this Renovus, they're not Renovus anymore. They're now not. there's somebody else, the yeah. Delaware River. Yep. Okay. So, well, and two one. years from now, is Norbit going to buy them? So now it's not them anymore. And it's, and it just keeps changing and changing so that the end. In 20 years, there's been 30 different owners. Then what? Nobody bond. What are you talking about? We don't have a bond. That's what's going to happen. And like you said, there's got to be some level of monitoring on there and some level of penalty. I mean, do you, well, along yes. with it, if, you, if you did a pilot, you'd have to get a, a renewal of the bond every year. Every year, right? I mean, we have to bond things, including business bonds things. Right. People bond roads when right. they use them with heavy equipment. This is a, this is a right. yearly occurrence. Right. For so there's an annual check, and you either meet the check or there's got to be some level of bound. Right. 
I can tell you the towns don't have this capacity. If this, this discussion you're having right now, they would have no idea how to put this in right. the pilot agreement. The county doesn't know. You know, I mean, um, the county legislators. This is within your purview. <laughs> So I, guess I might reconsider the gold okay. statement. <laughs> so to bring this back around, then are we in agreement that we'll coordinate with the town county and school? We'll send out the letters to say that a pilot will be required, and then we'll put together a, a meeting to figure out who and under what terms. Yeah, I like that plan. Now, now, now somebody put together the the full value. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. that was real property. Correct. And they used a system where they input all the company's details of the solar project and it provided them. Yeah. The state is going to start requiring some kind of DC acronym is now as of October 15th, they are requiring a uniform um assessment population Good. on all these throughout new york state so you know the variability won't be there anymore which is a really good thing for um you know also setting up a, a plan mm -hmm. a step up so step down scale whatever you want to do well it's, that's going to be based on the discounted cash flow more than likely over the life of it that's, that's it. way that's it's way that's way flow. beyond anybody at this table yeah, right that. right but at least the, you'll know that that assessment value that was just estimated by a real property director, right. we don't. That's that's a stat. Yeah, discounted you know, cash flows yeah, are we'll spreadsheets the, this yeah, long. We're now we're we'll know what the balance are, though. Right. Yeah. But the solar companies have the ability or, or know how to. They are going to tell us anything. Well, that's just it. I mean, you need to have somebody at the you know, at the real property level, whether it be the state or the county, that knows how to make sure that they're not getting right. one of the pressure. first ones we did, and it might have been with all this gave us the that analysis this is kind of cash flow analysis they and then they sold it yeah since because they don't yeah. want to admit there's a discounting cash flow they still, you know? still there's an awful the other lot of two. Those. well that's how they know they're making money I mean, right yeah. and they and, and they say they build them you know you got builders you have you have designers you have builders and, and they you say that people they're behind have... the curtain that are doing the buying and selling the right things after the facts this None of this is the end. All this is the beginning. These are the sales. The builder, the guy that's putting this together is making money building it. The people that are designing or making money designing them, the electrical workers unions are getting paid, a, you know, a prevailing wage to build them every one of these, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. And they always say and, that they're going to have local people do it. And I don't think that. Well, again, no, I don't most of them it. stay over in Virgil in the hotel over there right. and build these things all over. I know this. Yes. So they, but they, they, but this is what we're doing. We're building, we're designing, we're building, we're figuring out how to get the pilots and all the tax abatements and all these things in place because that, that helps on the financing and the build and the design. Everybody's making money over here. The actual cash flow, as far as electric, <laughs> that thing's, you can have a lot of pages before you see anything in black, but then these things will be sold and sold and sold and, and you do it by the efficiency of, you got one lawyer and one accountant and one guy that's helping at the bank and you don't have all these entities fighting over the crumbs. That's what's happening here. Now I can't tell you all the magic, but that's what's happening. So I, I, I tend to uh, agree with Aaron's statement that it's, I, I, I'm starting to think the control part is what we have going for us. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us have more information today than we certainly did when we sat down. Right. And, uh, and I think we ought to have a little more discussion about it before yep. we take the ball we down the road. Any, mm -hmm. any, I, any I further agree. questions? At the town level, at the county level, we're going to run into problems with the control and oh, absolutely. getting together that. We've already run into a lot of, some of them that fell through the cracks. And now, you know, even though, the, thank God, they're small ones, but, you know, they're, they're not paying the right. tax. But you can't expect yeah. everybody to be a... Passive. Uh, a lawyer know what whatever yeah, 487 right. is. Yeah. I mean, this is a new one on me. Yeah. But you know, I'm I'm in the lumber business. I, I'm not in the <laughs> legal business and or the how do I get away from paying taxes business. 
Do we have so, any further questions for Peter or Elaine this evening? No, but I thank you both for your- yeah. Thank you very much for coming. We really yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Ben Enlightening. We'll talk about the letter. Very enlightening. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Ben Enlightening. Thank you so sure. much. If thank you have any more questions, you can help with Leanne or Christine now, and we'll do what we can. Thank you. Thanks so much. So, okay. I'm What's next? Nice. These people <laughs> wanted us to do something. Okay. We're Not right now. Yeah, we're <laughs> we'll fix them. You said it There's going to be a decommissioning plan, or they're not building the, nothing. Yeah, just put it to the highest you can put it legally. And Larson Design Group. Yeah. To the floor. Next up. Thank you both for your patience. I'm not sure if Jason made it in. He, he uh, sent me a message that he was stuck in the in the waiting room. So I, don't know I finally. Yeah, I'm on. Okay. So we are up to talk about a wind energy project. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so they already know there's money. There's money there. All right, go. What's behind the curtain, Jason? <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let uh, Ken Stockert uh, talk about the wetland delineations and answer any questions that you folks have. Take it okay. away, Ken. Yep. Um, we completed the uh, delineation on the two parcels, um, totaling about uh, uh, 60 acres. Uh, plus or minus, um, we did identify two small wetlands on the one parcel. Um, one, one wetland is located uh, on the northern end of the parcel, very northern end. Uh, it's less than a tenth of an acre of wetland. Um, the second uh, wetland is on the very south end of the parcel and uh, is just over a tenth of an acre. I think it's 0.11 acres of wetlands. Um, both very small, uh, don't anticipate any significant issues from a permitting perspective, um, should not be state regulated, uh, and should qualify for a, uh, a Corps of Engineers nationwide permit. Um, depending on the extent of the impacts, uh, you know, if we uh, uh, have to, to permit complete impact to both of those wetlands, um, you are over the, you would be over the threshold of uh, requiring mitigation. Um, so we would have to look at uh, some type of compensatory mitigation to, to replace those lost impacts. Um, but uh, don't anticipate it to be a, a significant process to get through that depending on you know where you're at from a design standpoint um, you know obviously any wetlands uh, that can be avoided uh, reduces the uh, the permitting and, and mitigation efforts for those so um, really fairly straightforward uh, I think at this point open it up for for any specific questions you all have and do you have a map of the properties Thank that you. this group could see? Sure. Yeah, let me make you a co-host. Uh, there it is. Thank you for asking it. My files won't no, work really today. So this is the, the balance of the IDA East Site property and the Rusudo oh, property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this is Aaron. How close was the one on the south that. end to the drive going into that property? Let's see if I can uh, pull up the map. No, they gave us permission. Yeah, I can see yeah. where. You got it. So the driveway, that line, is that just a four wheel path or is that where it crosses the road? I mean, it comes out of the road. No, I, I believe, no, I wasn't on site. So, um, I so you don't know. 
can't tell you absolutely for sure, but this looks more like uh, this area here looks more like the the main access um, coming. That's out not the yeah. That's not what I remember when I was up there, but um, that, that looks to me like a four wheeler. People are coming across the road and just driving around the property, but I. The access there's an access point on Strong Road there, and and I don't remember exactly where it was. I would say it's right there. Right there. Yep. So it really probably won't affect us. Yeah, it does look like there's something right there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the wetlands are fairly. Uh, Fairly well out of the way, like I said, one at each end. Um, yeah. Pretty small too. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, this one was uh, just over a tenth of an acre. This one is just under a tenth of an acre. And there's nothing on the residual property. The adjacent mm -hmm. property, there were none identified on the adjacent property. No, there was nothing. Uh, no resources at all on the adjacent property. Um, you know, the, the total was just those two wetlands uh, on uh, on that one property. Which is amazing. Christine and I walked that property and it was pretty wet. Yeah, yeah. we're mm, agreed. Well, everything's wet now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it depends on when you're there. Yeah. So that dark on the adjacent property, that dark streak is a gully or? No, it's. No, that's actually a. a a pine stand. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's red pine. Is that good? No, not worth much. Okay. <laughs> just know that ask, ask Kevin. Oh, I know, but you answered before he did. He just took his ass. It's not worth much. I bet you want to build a cabin out of it. Those are flags. Any other questions, folks? Thank you. No, so we just stay out of that wetlands and we're fine, which looks like it shouldn't be too hard to do. Right. Yeah, with the location of them, I would anticipate that, uh, you know, you should be able to do some, uh, some design work to stay out of them and then you have no issues with that at all. Have a dog go up there laying, it'll be over. And this, we were looking, <laughs> we were looking for this as, as housing, right? That's, this is what we're looking at here. And, and this is an and what do you have how big a parcel do you have to have by town regular or town yeah. regulations now yeah we'd have to search that i'm not sure what it is right off we'd have to go back and look at it any of you guys at size larson size. know what that number is how many acres there is in a parcel up there in order to section that off into housing parcels uh, i can't remember what the what the minimum is i want to say it was an acre an acre and a half that, but that was a that was a while ago, and I'm not familiar familiar with what if there's anything current. Thought it was an acre and a half when we did the one um, up west beach. Town Tioga is one acre, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of I don't know what yeah. acres is. Town of Wheel likes to do things different, so who knows? Well, Thank you. Let's see what else do we need on that one? All we need is we good on that the was just, yeah i think we're good on the wet i'm good on the wet we're going to talk about it later okay ken mm -hmm. thank you so much for going over the wetland report with us not a problem thank you thanks guys thank you. Yeah, bring back that solar uh or that wind thing anytime yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'd be interested in that, on top of that. Yeah. i don't know i'm i'm headed I'm headed to the town of Prattsburg and um, not not to talk about wind, but they are not fans of the wind. Uh, it's, it's it's a fight every single uh, every single meeting out there. So I guess it's we all had little know. beanies with propellers on them. We'd all have plenty of wind. <laughs> <laughs> um, be before I'll just give a quick real quick update on the energy study over at Loungeberry. Uh, we met uh, Ralph. Well, Fry, my electrical engineer, and I met with Leanne and Christine earlier this week. Um, got some information from the county. We've actually got a meeting set up with Crown Court to understand 
some of their system over there. And uh, so thing, things are progressing right along and hopefully we'll have a, a more exclusive update uh, next month. Great. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Okay. Have, Thanks, have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Too. Thanks for your patience. No. Moving on with the agenda, folks. Um, hopefully everybody's had time to look at the minutes. Uh, I'm seeking a motion to approve the September regular meeting minutes and the loan committee meeting minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, moving on to the financials. Aaron, do you have any comments or John? No, everything looked good to me. I mean. I had a couple questions for Christine and she answered them. Yep. Same with me. Seeking a motion to acknowledge the financials, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thanks so much. Before moving on, I have an invoice to pay Aquasore for their portion of the water tank construction. Our checking account balance after I would make that payment it would be 222,000 in the negative. So I'm seeking permission to <laughs> uh -oh, we don't have any money. <laughs> transfer funds from the ICS account, which is that roughly one point, well, it's 1,564,000 and change or seeking other thoughts as to whether we want to cash in a capital improvement CD or something more, more outside of our normal procedure if we're not wanting to transfer it from the ICS. Aaron, thoughts? I, I would pull it out of the ICF. I mean, we're not making any money in it anyways, to speak of. That's a great recommendation, Kristen. So how about, how much do we want to take out? We have a little over 600,000 remaining for a Wego Gardens 2 project that we know of in regular payments. Do you, do you want to transfer a lot now or for me to come back? I guess I'm saying, do you want to transfer 300,000 or 600,000 right now, please? Let's transfer the 300. Okay. Uh, you can pull it. I mean, we don't have a number of times we can transfer money, do we? Not no. anymore. They, were, they lifted ICS restrictions. Okay. Then just transfer the 300 to get you by. Okay, thank you. Leanne Tinney. So do we need a motion on that transfer or are we good to just doing that, Joe? Just well, that why not do it. Okay. I make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Just to be safe. Yeah, motions all around. So we just sit there and go, Aaron said. <laughs> Aaron said it's okay. Don't you remember? Aaron, we're going to run that over. Can you co sign that, please? Put it in my bank account. <laughs> okay, so Christine has provided you with a little spreadsheet. Did you send it electronically or do we? I handed it out. Yeah. Uh, just kind of a we've been having conversations around activities within the village as we go, and it kind of got me to thinking about um, you know what sort of monies have been flowing into the village. Yep. So we did a little analysis of monies that Team Tioga has been had played a part in obtaining either on be, in the name of or on behalf of. Uh, the village of Owego or business entities within the village. Just, just kind of a little exercise to, to get a sense for what the impact has been to the village. Um, there's still some numbers missing. Um, we haven't filled in the blank yet, the yellow ones, so they don't have, haven't gathered those numbers yet, but this gives you a sense over the last five years, Team Tioga has impacted monies into the village of Owego in excess of $73 million. Awesome. So you better send this to the <laughs> village trustees so they can read it. I haven't chance. yet, but I can. I would love to see that. Yeah. And, and kind of, I want to get by our project. I'm right. right now, but it just 
We'll think of a way to approach that. Yeah, How's we need to that? think about that. How, how but I just that? wanted y'all to have a sense. Of, these are real monies. These are not, this is not, oh, spin off people spending money in, you know, the Wevo Kitchen and the park view. This is, these are actual monies. Mm -hmm. 5.5 million directly to the village. Oh, did I leave that on your counter, Rusty? <laughs> 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 so are, yeah, are private is, DRI projects getting funded now at this point? They're beginning to, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the governor is in support and would like to do smaller projects for smaller communities. Oh, that would be wonderful. That's something we picked up. Restore New York. Yeah, Bring that back. Yeah. Okay, so that was just an, an FYI. Uh, but I wanted to uh, I've been given brief reports the last couple of times. I would like to go into a little more detail about what's going on with EDMP. I'll, I'll be quick. Uh, just so you know, the Tide County Chamber of Commerce is pleased to announce that they have hired a new president and a CEO. Her name is Sabrina Henriquez, and she will be starting in her position on October 12th. Um, education Workforce Coordinator uh, Steering Committee, that's another discussion. We'll come back to that. Uh, Greater Valley Chamber of Commerce uh, annual dinner I attended, and I have a nice uh, proclamation here from the senator. I was hoping to be able to present to Eric as business person of the year, but he's not here tonight, so I'll get that to him. An assemblyman friend was in attendance um, at that event, which was very nice to have the assemblyman there. I got to sit with him and chat with him over dinner, so that was really nice. Uh, Regional Council, Christine attended that as well, so that was um, it was beautiful. Thank um, you. Regional Council um, Executive Committee has met and done the CFA scoring for this year. There were 98 projects to be considered. Those announcements will come in probably December. Um, we are looking at the this year's round of DRI. There is a $20 million pot available per region. In the past, it's been 10 million. So there's 20 million per region. So that will allow uh, the Southern Tier Region to award two of the three applications that have been made. For DRI? For DRI. Wow, cool yeah. flag. So it's City of uh, Ithaca, um, Endicott, and Norwich. Endicott, got it. So, so two of them will be awarded. That will be wow. So I've just read through those this afternoon and- When are they gonna make decisions on that? It'll probably be December. December. Yeah, I'm guessing. Um, it'll probably be before the end of the year. I don't imagine it'll be in the same manner as the previous governor did it, but mm -hmm. no, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So well, the, the regional council is voting on them yeah. October 13th. And then it goes off to the state and they do whatever it is they do, and then they'll make an announcement after that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Please uh, continue, Lee. <laughs> so on um, upstate shredding, I'm happy to say on the new signage, thank you again, IDA board, for contributing toward that effort. So upstate is paying for half of that, and then BNS is paying for part of it, and IDA for part of it, uh, 20 and 30% on those. So thank you for that, and that, that process has started for a new sign out there at uh, Corporate Drive. Um, Mr. Weitzman is, and I can talk about this because there was an article about it, um, he had contacted us about uh, a new project for cryptocurrency mining project. Uh, he's looking to locate in Tioga County. So we're working with them and NYSEG, uh, this is a big power drain type project. So um, working with NYSEG to see you know, if or where in the county that might be able to be located. So more to come on that. DRI projects are moving along. Uh, Coburn Library is actually completed um, and uh, they had their ribbon cutting and just waiting for the final payment from the state on, on that one. The other projects continue to move forward, although there have been identified two or three, how many? Three that have been as a train back the funds. So three of the projects that we thought initially are not going to go forward for any, you know, a number of reasons. So we'll have those monies back to redistribute out to other projects. Do you ever update the committee, the uh, local planning? Yeah. Committee? Like 
We have not so oh, far. Oh, I just got an evil look. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. Can you tell uh, me? <laughs> I'm sorry, Leah. Yes, we will. Uh, tensions are a little high with relationships within the village right now. So um, yeah. we're, we're tiptoeing at this point. So, but I'm happy to give, uh, have uh, Brittany give a, yeah. a, a summary on that. So yeah, that'd be cool. Hmm. There's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> uh, New York Main Street in Owego is ongoing. Uh, Megan has been taking the lead on that with the environmentals, and she's working through those, as well as the Main Street project in uh, Village of Candor. She's been managing that one as well. So those are moving forward. Owego Gardens 2, are you going to talk about that later? Sure. Okay. Yes. And the Temple and Liberty Street project, uh, we're in the process of local approvals. The 239 County 239 review has been completed and, and recommended for approval. It's gone to the Village Planning Board. Uh, that was last week, but um, after many hours, uh, decided to close the public hearing and delay any uh, decisions until the end of this month, the 26th, the Planning Board will reconvene and look at the approvals on that and then that would go to the zba hopefully on the 27th and tenant relocations are complete except for one uh, so Brittany's been doing a really great job on that and the balance of the properties to be purchased have been completed thank you joe for your work on that uh, those have been fit wrapped up and so now those properties are officially in the name of the land bank at this point um, i would ask that uh, once we get by the local approval process, uh, there are still challenges around this project in that um, Ithaca Neighborhood Housing Services did not receive uh, the, one of the sources of funding that they were looking at, OPWDD money. Uh, that was $1.3 million that they were not awarded. Um, however, they will apply again in the next round. This is what's happening. There are a lot of requests out there. Not everything can be funded. Um, so they've been advised to apply again. Um, if or when they're approved for that, they will still have roughly a $750,000 gap in their funding. So we are trying to help them fill that gap. Um, for them to make the application again for the 1.3 million, uh, it's gonna cost them about another 30,000 to do that. So I'm asking this board if you would consider uh, the agency fee associated with the pilot, I know you said we need to stick to it. That fee was $138,073. Uh, but I'm here to ask if this board would consider reducing that by $30,000 so that the fee would be $108,073 instead of $138,000. That $30,000 they can put in the overall budget and help them to make mm -hmm. that application again to, uh, for the funding for the um, OPWDD part of the package. I think to help them move forward, we should definitely consider that. Did they lose the money for the first application? Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, they start again. I have a memo in here on it. So not only do they not get awarded, they lose their application. Yeah, to go again. Yeah. Well, yeah. With all the money that's out there from the federal government, I mean, it's amazing that they're charging a fee. So I have a memo on that. I'm not finding it right now. I thought I brought it with me. Where they broke it down for me and what exactly right. it is. Here it is. So they say to date we have spent a little over ninety thousand. So the answer to the questions outlined above, I would estimate the cost it would cost another fifteen thousand if we decided to then submit an application to HCR and reapply to OPWDD if this would cost approximately $30,000. Is that a fee or is that inclusive of labor costs? Or? That's there. I, oh, you're talking. I don't know what the breakdown is on that, uh, Jen. They're just saying they're short, they're going to be short money to be able to do that. So what if we say yes, and then they apply again and get turned down? How long do they keep applying? 10 years from now, they're still applying or what? I don't know. 
but it's not really costing us anything. We're just <clears throat> not getting as much. Correct. Correct. That's so it's costing us in the long run, but until they do something, it didn't cost us anything. Right. It does cost you something because if we get an application fee and approve a pilot and the whole thing, you get that, right? And what yeah. happens if we, we go through that entire process and they lose a piece of their funding? We don't get the agency fee until they enter the pilot agreement, which they're not ready to do yet until they get their funding approved. So we, we're not spending any money out of pocket. We're just yeah. not going to get yeah. as much money when it's time for it to give us something. What are you shaking your head yes about the part where, where we're not spending the cash or we're giving a little break on the agency fee so we're really not getting it? Both. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, one means you reach in your pocket and the other one means We're not just spending any money until they come it's, to the table. It's the second one. Right? Right, yes. Aaron, how do you feel? I'm fine with doing that. I, I don't have a problem with doing that. Well, that kind of I mean, takes all the wind out of my sail. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to, to congenial right. today. Were you, were you practicing that? Just, it makes me so mad that the village is, <laughs> is giving us so much trouble on this. It's just, right. You know, let's yeah, help this. I'm 100% with you in that camp after all the thought process I've had on this particular project. It's, it just, it makes perfect sense. Oh my God. Drive down that street. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it makes, it makes perfect sense for housing within the a walkable distance to all the places that would like the revenue right. that are going to come from these places. Right. right. It's a great location. I think we got a yes. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it. I think we got a yes. Motion. motion approving reduction in I'll make that motion. Agency fee. <laughs> I'll second. I'll second it. Thank you. Thank All in you. favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. I getting got that? That's great. All right. Thank you. Uh, just a little reminder that there are American Relief Program Act funds uh, that the county is responsible for. Um, distributing and just, just as an FYI, um, our our department has made a request specifically for five hundred thousand uh, for uh, use for the land bank, seven hundred and fifty thousand through um, a broadband project. We can talk about it if you want. Um, tourism for a hundred thousand and some ortho imaging mapping for two hundred thousand. We also asked for three hundred thousand for implementation of a countywide code enforcement plan that has been mixed so that that is out of the mix but uh the county legislature is now in the process of reviewing the applications and making some determinations on those uh, requests that have been made so nightmare is growing really so and everybody thinks that they should get a piece of that yeah well i don't care what everybody else says but we need this <laughs> well you're gonna have to lobby for the land bank because i got a little pushback from other legislators today Okay, so you got to be sure to be there tomorrow. Yep. Okay, so getting back to the workforce pipeline development study and the education workforce coordinator, um, as you may recall, uh, the initial plan for this hire of this education workforce coordinator was to be as a contract employee employee of the IDA, and that we have a uh, hundred thousand a year by way of Hooker Foundation grant monies to fund this person for three years, and that um, in that three-year period, this person would be required to secure funding uh, to continue to move that, um, that position forward. So uh, the committee put the uh, job posting out there, got a bunch of responses, narrowed it down to about five people who might be appropriate, set up interviews before we could, four people. Before we could actually get the interviews done, two of the people took other jobs. So we interviewed two for the for the position. One of them was just stellar um, and outstanding. And so um, the long short story is that he's currently uh, part of the New York State retirement system. And by being a contract employee, he would lose that. And he was basically not willing to give that up, which is understandable. Uh, we tried 
every avenue we could think of to, to make that work and we couldn't. So uh, it's caused the steering committee to want to regroup and say, maybe we should rethink this with this project, uh, with this position being uh, no benefits associated with it. You know, we're thinking that we're probably not getting all the applicants that might, might if they were, if we were able to offer a little bit more. So um, I'm putting two options out there and I presented the first option to um, my EMP committee yesterday. That would be to make this position a county position and um, paid still by way of the grant, but that they would be a county person, receive county benefits, be part of the state retirement system, or uh, an employee of the IDA, which I bring to you all tonight, an employee of the IDA, which would again uh, allow for uh, benefits, but not part of the state retirement system. Um, the pros to the county taking that role is that they could be part of the retirement. Pros to the IDA taking that role would be that we would have a little more leeway in what we could actually offer for that salary range. The, the, if it goes through the county, there is a prescribed range, I think it's between 43 and 53,000 um, that we would be limited to uh, due to, you know, Bethany's reviewed it and said, if we're gonna take it through the county, here's where you would be. Um, if we were to do it through the IDA, we'd have more leeway on what we were able actually to, to offer in the way of that salary range. So the steering committee is meeting on Thursday. Uh, met with the county EDMP committee yesterday. They were overwhelmingly in support of uh, taking the position through the county if, if we should choose to go that way. But I would like to be able to say we could do either or if um, the IDA is agreeable to the possibility of making this position uh, W-2 employee of the IDA that, so that the steering committee can kind of weigh those two options and figure out what, what way we'd like to try and go forward and then put it out there again uh, for, um, you know, post it and see, see what we get if we change the, the benefits associated with the, with the position. So I, I have an issue with this, I think, because how this job, how this is created in the resolution create situations for the county that are that don't belong to the IDA. It says, so it says three years, but because they become a county employee, doesn't really say there's a drop dead date. So what do you do when you run out of money? How do we let this person go? Right. The other thing And who's is, gonna take a job that's got a three year term on it? But I know there's ways to do that. But the other one I'm, I'm struggling with is, this person works remotely. So we pass this resolution, I'm talking to the legislature. Then we're setting a precedent that people can work remotely. Because yep. one means all for the yep. I do not like that. Um, and there's there was one more that I had a concern about. But, but if you made it a county employee. There's nobody to have the historical knowledge that knows that this job was a creative me. solution to a need that the IDA had. No one will remember. I don't think it's that it difference. wasn't always there. No, I'm, I'm just talking about historical knowledge because right. people leave. Yep. Leanne's going to retire. People are going to retire. Brittany said, know. where do we get that <laughs> job from? Is that really, is that really still this is, it's too bad, but you know. People walk out of here and nobody remembers. You know, those are really happens. good points. But isn't it, isn't it in the minutes? Yeah, but nobody knows to look in the minutes. Yeah. You mean to tell me our government keeps growing because we're not smart enough to read the book? In some cases, <laughs> that's true. Anyway, but it has to, but that's just me talking out loud. And, and I wasn't. Just a small sample of exactly what you just said. Oh, my uh, God. Anyway, it just got to, you know, if the legislature votes it in, fine. But there's going to be repercussions with that remote policy. But you also said you could find a hole for them. But who said they have to be remote? Well, that was, again, that was our initial intention. 
I did mention to Marty that there is an empty desk up outside of uh, Christine's office mm -hmm. where we used to sit, where we yeah. could set somebody up in there if the county was agreeable to allowing that that space to be used. How often do they have to be in the building before they're not considered involved? And a lot of people work on the road. There's all kind of county employees that are on the road all day. Yeah, that's it's a whole other thing. It's it's a thing, Kevin. Because we're working on a remote policy. We've been working on a remote policy and we're getting pushback for the remote policy from the legislators. So you're gonna say, okay, we're gonna let this person work remotely. It's just complicated. I always yeah. prefer to give the person some space here, but that was my first choice. I think we would have the ability to do that. I mean, it was the original intent of figuring that this person is gonna be on the road a lot. Right. This is your suggestion. They're doing it, if they're doing it right. They're right. going to be out and right, and that's home. different than working remote. So that's a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you just go tomorrow and see what happens? And if it the legislature says yes, then you still have two options. Well, IDA has to say yes for me to have two options. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> but wasn't that the original option though? No, the original option. Was IDA is a contract employee, so not an employee of the IDA. So we're, but, we're managing it to a certain uh, degree, but this is not a requirement that we have. And, and so you know, the the uh, funding source, so Hooker and Mark, um, is more in favor of this being through the IDA than through the county. I really am too. Except the <laughs> except really that am. person's not going to be in the retirement. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. So if you're, if we're, if here's a reason, who's going to manage that behind, person? Here's the thought. Brittany behind. Woodburn. Brittany Well, Potential candidates could possibly be teachers or retired teachers who are already in the New York, we already know this, already in the state retirement system. So to entice them away. Potentially. Right. I think it's still going to limit our pool of candidates in the long run. I don't know. I think we're going to have to rehash this another time. I just had to go to the exercise. So I share my word. People want benefits. They want retirement. They want their benefits. Well, hell yeah. It costs a ton of money, though. No kidding. It does. Mm -hmm. I have those numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like whatever the salary is, it's like 75 to 80%. So here it is. On a $53,000 salary, the estimated total fringe, including participating in the retirement system, is $33,422 and $53,000 salary. Is that help in terms 75%. of- 75%. Yeah. Incredible. Oh, 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 Missed that. I wonder it hurts so bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we already got 400 employees. What's one more? <laughs> <laughs> we write a check to the to the uh, state for two point some million dollars every year for retirement. Yeah, unbelievable. So you're looking for a boat or just? I, I I need to know whether this is an option that I can. Have Brittany share with the steering committee on Thursday. What's the range it's option you're talking about as an IDA? <laughs> Say it again. So what, what's the range you're talking about if the IDA is the so keeper of the key? It's good. So the range is going to be close to, close to this. It's going to be a little bit less because of the no retirement, retirement piece mm -hmm. of it. But it's going to be say thirty thousand anyway. The health insurance, right? Or as much less so, than the county. So. so when you were figuring out how much you pay them, you were just thinking people were going to come and they wouldn't need benefits. Well, we, we were open-minded about it. Okay. I mean, it, it, it did not work out, though. And the grant was how much? 100 a year. We were offering up to 75 <clears throat> for the starting salary. So, yeah, we got a ton of candidates. Mm. People looked at that salary. We had more candidates. We knew what to do with mm. Only a handful that were actually qualified. Yeah, that's true. So we could go to 65. If we. 
Well, if we say yes tonight, then we won't get any say about what the salary is going to be. You guys will figure it out without us. <laughs> well, well, they know they have so much to work with. Right. We have X. Mm -hmm. And so we'll figure out how we're going to disperse that. Why so why don't you see, <laughs> why don't you see what the legislature wants to do? Well, but she wants to know she's got so it. And then we have a backup answer. plan. Mm -hmm. The IDA's backup plan. I prefer to go through the camp. an email sure. after you get done with the legislature yeah, right? and we'll have it figured out. <laughs> so, okay. or do you already have somebody in mind no. and, and this is behind the curtain no. stuff? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I got to know. We have to start yeah. from scratch at this point. Nope. You got a lot of curtains going but on. We, we we just, but we need to, this would help us define when we put it back out there what range you were talking about. Because it's going to be different if it's county or if it's IDA. We'll be able to offer more in the way of salary if it's IDA. Well, you have to get through the county thing first, right? To know no. that's actually an option, or it, do we already know it is an option? No, we don't. So EDMP committee it's supported it, but there apparently are other legislators who don't support it. So. There's don't only know four legislators that are on the EDMP committee. Right. You need five for you a need, Yeah. I mean, would this would this board consider making this position an IDA position? Would you consider that? Aaron? Yes, I, I don't have a problem <laughs> with that. I just I just don't want to be involved with the state retirement system. We went through this before and I don't want to go back there again. I've heard. Mm. You like to keep the know. county and the IDA that that separate, way. right? As much that's, as you can. That's is right. That, is that your, I think I heard you say that. Before. I think I have to several times. So you said you would support this position, but you're not interested, just not as long as it's not a um, retirement situation. State retirement. Right. I mean, if we have to pay more to get a person of this caliber for three years, then we can do that. But but we're not signing up for the state retirement. Okay. The IDA. Right. I guess I'm kind of in the same boat there. I mean, I'm, you guys can research it if you want, but. I, we've been there. Right. I, I agree. Down this road before. Yep. Vianne took us down this road at one point. Didn't you, uh, Vianne? I think I did, maybe even a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what are you looking for? I need to know if this board would be open to making this position in a W 2 employee of the IDA as an option. I think we would, as long as Brittany manages the person. With the total employment package being what? What's the X? What's the, it's $100,000 a year. $100,000 cap to for a year. Which includes benefits. Okay. And then it, well, set by 30 grand and a grand. Right. So it's paid for. All right, I'll step in the chilly water. <laughs> 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 All right. Just make sure you read the minutes in three years and review them. Yeah, I hope and I'm remember here in three them years. to look for them. Don't even. Do there you go. See? So, do we have consensus that we do. this is an option? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You okay. just butter for three years. <laughs> for three years. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it doesn't. It's a giant <laughs> And then none of us are sitting there saying, where I'm at, too. <laughs> oh, boy. Are you okay. done? <laughs> uh, last, the last thing is just let you know that our office has identified 11 potential grant possibilities. We have 16 grants that are out there pending right now. We have 27 grants that we are actively engaged in and one that has been completed. And that was the Village of Waverly, Mildred Faulkner, Truman, Waverly Glen Park grant. Sure. That's it. Thank you, Leanne. That was fabulous. Appreciate it. No, you had a lot of stuff. I know. <laughs> okay. I, I, I just need to okay, reduce workforce. 
uh, Lounsbury Industrial Hub, the, uh, and the Lounsbury Industrial Hub, Industrial Hub, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the developer is putting together a proposal. We thought we were going to have it for this month, but they did a little tweaking that they need to do. That'll come in at the November meeting. Um, a reminder. Oh, you're going to cover the OG too. Never mind. And uh, broadband looking at a potential project in the town of Nichols within the opportunity zone. We have now an investor on board, Southern Tier Network, um, an internet, excuse me, internet service provider. Um, and if we get ARPA money, um, then uh, maybe some money there to run fiber to the home to potentially 350 identified unserved or underserved homes um, within the town of Nichols opportunity zone so that's moving right along so we're getting close on that as well. that is okay good yep. to know because yep. because yep. i'm you you're going to get pushback about that too because yeah. why is nichols getting this and richard's not yeah is it ready so yeah it, the, I, I'm, the I'm, always, I'm just telling you i've already heard about it yep so the opportunity zone um spencer and nichols tioga and uh, our, our broadband is specifically um, designated for ARPA money. And so with, with the combination of, of um, investors interested in the opportunity zone, putting that money out there. So they'll put, put some money in coupled with this money. And we have an interested um, internet service provider. It just all is coming together for there. Okay. Um, if, if it works out and we don't actually need 750,000 in the town of Nichols, certainly we would use it in other areas. The other thing is the federal government is coming forth with money separate from this. Yes. And my argument is I don't want to spend all of our money on doing that when they're coming. But that, that money is going to require a match. So it would be the 750. The federal government money will be a match and if we have the opportunity we'll keep that to yourself until we get this other <laughs> stuff taken care of <laughs> but the 750 could be the match that's what i'm saying oh, that's oh, how oh. you put it all together yeah you need you need that match money oh yeah i know i know that's good but well, if i was waiting on high-speed internet i certainly would be afraid to be sitting around waiting for the state to act yeah well charge forward man head down hit the wall let's get her done okie dokie then the state will come in anyway. <laughs> okay, thanks. When's the when's hopefully it's going to be uh, for re-election? Okay, next year. Next year, yeah. So the state <laughs> will come forth with money next year. Okay. Well. Christine, you're up. Thank you. So, regarding We Go Gardens to uh, Aqua Stores, working on the water tank portion, we received, like I mentioned earlier, a three hundred five thousand plus invoice from them. Regarding the Suez inspection fees, we've stayed on them and finally received all inspection reports to date, totaling a little over 117 hours. The inspector has worked on the Uigo Garden Sioux project. He's paid $90 an hour, so to date, uh, $10,544 he has earned by his inspection, which is much less than what we paid up front. So perhaps we will get a refund in the end. They're anticipating the tank being in service November 26th at this time. Um, we need $300,000, but we're only going to spend 10 of that. <laughs> God. All right, sorry. No, but you're right. And um, lost my, lost my, I lost my train of thought there, but. <laughs> um, yeah, overall. Um, Fagan's done their part regarding the, the electric SCADA and generator uh, specs for that work. It's in Suez's court and they are anticipating it to be moving well. So construction complete by the end of the year, hopefully. Um, still have to us how much uh, it's going to cost. How much what? Uh, that's going to cost. Isn't that what, that's what we're still missing? We're still missing the total fees for all three. It's a reminder that will result in a revised developer agreement from Suez once we know those numbers. Any questions? No. Okay. So, 
I'm passing around some street duck, street duck information on a shovel ready loan. So Leanne suggested we consider a street deck shovel ready loan program to support our build out of the industrial hub infrastructure out in Lounsbury. So put together this brief overview of what that would mean for us should we proceed. Um, their interest rate 75% of prime, so it's currently 2.44%. They offer 15, ter 15 year loan terms. And they would fund up to 50% of our total project cost, but right now all they have in the fund available is 375,000. So I just ran this scenario. If we took out the street deck loan for 375,000, um, we would still have 1.4 plus million in infrastructure build out costs to pay in cash. Um, and the total interest over the 15 year term would be $73,178. That idea would be you know, paying an in interest. So does anybody have an interest in pursuing this program? And this is, the buildings that we're talking about. Yes, yeah, so the the spec industrial light industrial buildings, mm -hmm. it looks at this time like this the developers. The phase one, two, three, four yep. things. Mm -hmm. So the developer's yeah. gonna build the building, but um, the IDA was going to build out the infrastructure. And if you recall, Jason gave you as um, Christine has broken down here, the mm -hmm. anticipated cost to do so by phase. Um, you know, so really you could do, you could do build out of phase one and two um, using these loan funds in lieu of just taking IDA money to put that out, put out, put out there. And then the thinking being, once the buildings are built and we start getting the repayment from the developer in whatever way that shakes out, we're not sure yet, we could ultimately take that money and, and pay the new loan funds back if you should choose to do that. So it's just an, it's an option. You don't have to decide anything about it tonight. We'll know better if it's a good option, depending on what proposal comes back from um, the developer on, on uh, you know, lease agreement or whatever it is that we can kind of work that into the scenario. But I, I just want to let you know that this is a possibility. If you didn't want to take cash out and do it, here's a possibility. Okay. Anytime there's $73,000 in interest, I just soon use cash. <laughs> Well, that's over 50 years. Your but, but you're not going to But your cash years. is not going to earn $73,000 in interest in, in 15 years in but the vehicles is, we use. But I wouldn't anticipate that you would be have that out there for 15 years. Okay. That's an option. <laughs> so what you're saying is we pay it off earlier. Yeah. And it only costs us $72,000. That's right. <laughs> we got uh, it. Uh, uh, I'll see if I word it that way. There you go. Know. <laughs> see where I stand. We'll have more. We'll be able to put more of a <clears throat> scenario on that for you. But I just wanted to let you know that this is out there. It's, nope, it's one of the options. I'm sure there's going to be more before this all goes down, I would imagine. Well, options for funding? For all kinds of stuff. <laughs> we tried to pursue some build back better grant funding for this, but I don't think <laughs> okay um so moving on I didn't print out the I can't access any of my files today I apologize for that but I included here Department of Labor notice I'll email it to everybody and you Joe it's saying that starting at certain date all projects will be required to pay um Prevailing wage. Prevailing wage. Mm -hmm. Things are getting more expensive. Mm -hmm. Not everything. So I'll send that out to you. project $5 million or more with 30% or higher subsidy. Hey, that sounds just like it. It's <laughs> getting more expensive. Oh, yeah. I don't know what this is. Yeah, because and, and it's ridiculous. It's, it's well, I mean, associated it's with the water. inside. Tank, water, east tank site, project. water tank. Okay. It's already so hard. Sewers, projects are working. Sewer. Mm -hmm. Throw that. I mean, that, that's a lot of potential. Oh, is that your? Oh, I spent a lot of money. Thank you. I don't have anything. Yep. 
Okay. All right. So moving forward to committee updates. Uh, the finance committee is recommending the board approve the IDA budget as proposed, seeking a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Second, please. Uh, the budget, Thank you. The proposed budget. Oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. We go Gardens to Ann Robinson still submitting uh, their sales tax exemption updates. You know, we're monitoring, making sure they don't take any excess. Uh, school and village pilot payments were received and will be dispersed within a week. The Sunnies Valley Solar, clearly we are not passing resolution tonight and we'll con continue considering that. What I don't, what I'm not able to show you on the board and thankfully I printed off is this, uh, I will pass around, it's an amended resolution for the Ithaca or the INHS Temple and Liberty Street pilot agreement that we already passed. This is just adjusting their total number of units from 45 to 46 and all else remains exactly the same. 45 to 46 units, we have to do this again. <laughs> so in order for the paperwork to be just right, we're seeking a motion to approve this revised resolution of approval. So moved. Thank you, how about a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? You want, uh, you want to see that? Opposed? No, depending it's on. a one bedroom, small closet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so. <laughs> and we are seeking one more resolution today, <laughs> which I'll pass around. It is approving, authorizing the IDA to apply to. The New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services for a planning grant for the Richford Railroad Crossing. We've been anticipating applying for this grant for many months. We've been telling you about it, but now we're finally ready to apply on November 10th and seeking permission, please. Motion, please, to approve the resolution authorizing the grant application. That motion. Thank you. How about a second? Second. All in favor? Opposed? So much. That's all I have for the regular agenda today. Motion to move into executive session, please. I'll make that motion. Second. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You said six o'clock. I'm yeah, sorry. No, I gotta go. Uh, Let me get us off of YouTube. We won't decide anything too important. Did I important. know about? No. No big deal. Okay. Well, no. It's your pleasure to see me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, okay. Have a good night, Casey. <laughs> Thank you. See you all over the